Now in this next part, we've got to describe then the skewness of the marks of these students, giving a reason for our answer. And what I've done is I've just brought back or summarized the values for the lower quartile, median and the upper quartile, the mode, mean and standard deviation of values we found in the earlier parts of the question. Because to describe this skewness, there's several ways that we could do this. And uh, I'll show you all the different ways. You only have to select one, though. The first thing that, I, that comes to mind for me, me, though, is that I would tend to want to compare the quartiles. Just like if you were drawing a box and whisker plot. If you're drawing a box and whisker plot, it would look something like this. We'd have our box here, and we'd have our whiskers out the end here. Now, this value here, hopefully you remember, is the lower quartile. So this value here is going to be at 46, Q1. I'll put it just on the top there. This value here is the upper quartile, Q3. And in this example, it's 64. And the median, Q2, 56, would be drawn by a line somewhere between here. Well, 56 is just going to be slightly more biased towards the 64. Okay, So, because here you've got a width of 10 units, and here you've got a width of 8 units. You don't have to put the lower and highest values on, but if you did, the lowest value here would be at 36, and the highest value would be at 73. But we're not really so interested in these values, it's what we've got here. You can see that this width is greater than this width, and when that happens, you've got a bigger width here, it is negative skew. So. I would say something along these kind of lines, that since Q2 minus Q1 is greater than Q3 minus Q2, what we've got is negative skew. All right, no, I'll buy that just underneath there. Negative skew. So that's one way of doing it. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that if this interval, Q3 minus Q2, happened to be greater than Q2 minus 1, then we've got the opposite of this, which is positive skew. Now, I did say that there were other ways of measuring skewness. Another way would be to compare the values in this order of the mean to the median to the mode. And what we find here is we can see that the mean is 55.5 and it is less than the median of 56. And the median is less than the mode of 60. Okay, so when you've got this situation, you've got negative skew. And again, we can reverse the argument that if the mean is greater than the median is greater than the mode, then you've got positive skew. So that's another way of doing it. One other measure of skewness is to work out this value, the mean minus the median, and compare it to the standard deviation. So we divide that by the standard deviation. I'll just write SD for short. And if you do this calculation, if it comes out negative, then we've got negative skew, and if it comes out positive, we've got positive skew. So if we were to carry out this calculation, what have we got? Well, we've got the mean is 55.5, and we've got that the median is 56. So we take away 56, divided by the standard deviation of 10.3. Now you've only got to look at the numerator here, and you can see that you've got a negative value. But when compared to 10.3, it's a small negative value. It turns out to be minus 0 0.0083. But nonetheless, it is a negative value. So it's showing that uh, we've got negative skew. 
even though it's only slight negative skew. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful if you wanted to have a little bit of a vision as well on these kind of methods. Okay, 